we have some announcements. We have our trick or trunk coming up, and um, there's a flyer in your bulletin about that, and there's also information up on the screen. Uh, the Fall Bazaar is coming up, and of course it's an online auction, so some items are rolling in. You might want to look at them on the back table. Um, we're collecting the food for the Redfield Food Pantry and cookies this month. Uh, the diaper drive, we're collecting diapers for the Tree of Ministry, and um, those will certainly get to where they need to go, even if we don't get to go. Um, on the back of your bulletin insert, there's talking about our prayer by email. And um, so if there's any prayer requests you would like to lift up, it goes to the pastor, and then he will deal with those as you would like them dealt with. And there's also the online um, giving that's available, and that's all in your church bulletin. Um, I see there's a thank you on the back of the insert from the um, Tri-County Good Samaritan Centers. So they are thankful for all of the things that we are being, we are taking and sharing with them at their facility. <coughs> so are there any other announcements? This is Lassie for peanut, or for peanut chocolate and pop. From Turtle by the end of the week. So if you have not gotten yet, let me know. <laughs> okay, so Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts are doing their product sales, so support them. Good program. Um, any birthdays or anniversaries? Okay. All right. Well, then I guess we'll move to our opening song. Prepare the way. Well, this first one is actually a round. We are not going to attempt it in a round, but we are going to sing it three times. So by singing it three times, you'll be more confident by the third time around when, when you sing it. We'll listen to her play one time so I get the notes right in my head. <laughs>
children's choir come forward, and then uh, Cody will do our children's time today. Oh, I see bags coming. Hey, we're going to sing this little line of mine, so you guys are welcome to join us. A little bit faster than we sing it with the cat, but we're going to sing it. Is it a puzzle? A little, little puzzle? It's like a little cube kind of puzzle thing. I'm not going to try to solve it. I probably couldn't do it. But Do you have a little job that you have to do for this? What do you have to do? Isn't it you have to solve this? It's your, it's your duty or your service, right? We all have a job that we have to do or service that we have a task to complete. Even like here at the church. My dad and Megan have the computers to do. Pastor Steve has preaching. and We get to do the candles and do the bells and all that stuff. We all have a job that we have. So, do you think it's that hard of a task to do? It, no, <laughs> it's not that hard. Maybe one day you guys can get up to the tasks of what Megan or my dad does, or maybe you do what Pastor Steve does and you can come and stand in front of people and preach like nothing else. It's, it can be kind of terrifying, but he can do it. <laughs> let's, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything that you get to do, letting us come to church, and for all the people that can stand in front of people and all the people that have services that help this church around us. Amen. Now, who would like to bag next week? I think Cooper wants it since he's getting up. Here you go, Cooper. Here you go. Well, singing and showing your love is one way of being helped through engagement. So that 
was very good. Thank you very much for your beautiful song. Because we are the light into the world. So, okay, our first scripture then is from Deuteronomy. Let's see if we can find it. Six, nine, or six, four through nine. Today we are going to talk about ordinary people, therefore go forth through engagement. Ordinary people, like you and I, are called to shine into the world. God used his late efforts to engage all of his people into putting their faith into action. You just saw some faith in action. I want to thank the individuals that said yes to presenting. Presenting in the way that we serve the Lord. We serve God every day. You recognize those in needs. You invite others to further his kingdom. Relationship is the key. I want you to take a minute and think about all those that have loved you into being. These people that shared your life, that share our lives, guide us to our first topic, which is hope through engagement of family. So let's look at our scripture, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. O oh Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as a symbol on your hand, hands and bind them to your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your houses and on your gates. When you think about this scripture and you think about some of the church families that we have, it's so nice to see generation after generation. And I had asked a speaker, several of the families, for, to, if they would um, share on how their family had developed that generation after generation of serving the Lord and being faithful to the Lord. And unfortunately, my speakers were busy today. <laughs> so, um, that is a very wonderful thing. And as our scripture tells us, you know, you talk about it, you family grace, you share the word of the Lord throughout your day as you're going for walks and as you're doing things as a family unit. And that keeps you in the church. I didn't grow up with that type of experience, so that is something that really amazes me, and it's wonderful to see how generation after generation. Um, one of the first speakers I asked actually has a, a little baby, and one of my questions was, and how will you instill that, you know, in your child? And so that would have been an interesting thought to for her to share on how she would do that. But there are the... Um, Bible stories and the little songs that you can sing with your children. And ladies will have some comments. I, I want to rescue for uh, Beth has put so much time and effort into doing this and a lot of prayer background. But I know I, both Pastor Steve and I grew up in generational churches. Uh, Steve's family, it was a little bit more spotty. Uh, although his mother uh, was a faithful member, man, these UMW ribbons, she gave away hundreds of them. Uh, and she served not only in the local church, but also beyond. And Steve got to see that all the time growing up. And uh, so being part of the church family was really important to me, to, to him and to me. In my family, both of my parents were strong Christians. And my dad was one of these people that would always demonstrate. He wasn't really good about speaking, and I know you're going to talk about witnessing later, <laughs> but he always said, you should know that I'm a Christian by what I do. And I always countered him by saying, yeah, but Dad, sometimes people don't know why you're doing those things. But one of the things my dad did was he made a life-size nativity. And I remember as a teenager, I knelt down on the grass in the middle of summertime as he shaved chicken wire around me so that he could get the right form of the Virgin Mary to go in into the uh, uh, nativity. And he decorated these by hand-sewn costumes. Yeah, my dad did know how to sew, taught himself, 
And then he set the nativity out, and the manger was always empty. Because at night, inside this manger, he had a cross carved out of it, and a light would shine at night, showing that Christmas and Easter are forever connected. And that image was so strong in my life that, that I can't shake it. Uh, the Christmas and Easter cycle is deeply embedded in my life. And uh, I know when Pastor Steve and I raised our own six children, we tried to instill in that. I know we missed the mark on so many things, but uh, uh, they are well-adapted children and grown adults with children of their own, and they're passing on what that they have to their others. So thank you. I wanted to rescue you a little. <laughs> thank you for sharing. <laughs> okay. All right. So it is important that, you know, the family tradition continues, and those are wonderful memories of, you know, how you can look to others in your family and strengthen your faith. Okay, um, next we're going to just look around our congregation at um, the people that uh, have hope in our church, and I'm going to talk about um, looking at serving as the hands of Christ through the hope of engagement in the church. And there are many people out here that do a lot for our church, as we will find. Our scripture for this is Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in everyone is the same God at work. Now, to each one manifestation of the Spirit is given for a common good. So, recently, several of my devotions have been de related to serving God. One told of the beautiful horses performing elegant maneuvers versus the pull horses, uh, the horses pulling the carriages about town. Yet, both serve a very valuable purpose. Some people are recognized for their accomplishments, and others serve God in quiet ways. Both receive great honor in God's eyes. In our church, we have those that fulfill committee positions and those that do the small necessary tasks that allow us to enjoy our church fellowship. We just need to use the talents that we're given. I tried several committees before I found the Mission Committee, which fills me with joy. I enjoy helping others in our church and community. When they asked me to be lay leader, I couldn't believe it. Neither could my family. They're like, really? And I'm like, really? So I accepted the position with reassurance from others that I, it suited me. Well, we'll see after today. <laughs> And other members have provided these beautiful fall decorations, the crafts of the crosses and the woodwork, the candles being filled and the wicks pulled up so they burn brightly. There are candle lighters, the makers of these love ribbons, the bathroom painters, the weed pullers, the lawn mowers, the snow shovelers, the bakers and the gardeners for the harvest table the ones who give donations, and those that deliver them where they need to go, the special words on the wall, the teachers of the Vacation Bible School, Sunday School, and youth groups. It's amazing to know all of the services performed within our church. Another recent devotion reminds us, whatever we do for the least of Jesus' people, we do for him. Sending cards and calling is very important right now but they're just little ways to share great love and give God's grace to the world. All of these tasks are important in the lives, in the life of our church. Your role and service to the church is um, important. As Grandma O said, God has an important thing for you to do. Say yes. 
Now I'm going to ask Dylan to come up and he's going to talk on Go With Hope Through Engagement on the Job. So as most of you know, I'm in Boy Scouts, and right now I'm a Star Scout. For those of you that don't know how the ranks of scouting is, this is two ranks away from becoming an Eagle Scout. As we get older in Scouts, we have the opportunity to attend what are called High Adventure Bases. This summer I had the chance to, to attend one of these bases with four other Scouts and three of our leaders. When we attended Sea Base, we were the very first group of the season because they had to shut down because of COVID. When we were there, we were taught everything we needed to know about how to sail our boat by our Captain Brandon. Proverbs 6, 16.30 says, Ask the Lord to bless your plans, and you'll be successful in carrying them out. When we went for Florida, none of us knew much about sailing. When we were done with our trip, we were able to hoist the sails, tie the knots needed, drop them with the anchor, and clean the boat right. I'd say that's a pretty successful trip. We were taught everything we need to know how to sail by listening, to Brent, listening and watching to Brandon. And this rainbow was after a huge rainstorm passed over us while we were out on the water. Only the leaders saw it because all the scouts were hiding in the bottom of the boat. <laughs> this is a couple of pictures of our crew right before we left. The scouts are Carter, Caleb, Gabe, Brandon, and me. And the leaders are Chad, David, and me. And this is a large group of yellowtail snappers by the boat as we were dropping small chunks of seagrass back into the water. And they eat the tiny organisms that live in the seagrass. That's a picture of our boat, the Conch West. That's me rolling up the power cord and lifting one of the bumpers off the side of the boat as we were leaving sea base. Because you don't sail with bumpers. And these are some of the beautiful sunsets we saw while we were sailing. While we were just sailing, we were able to fish. We didn't catch anything very big, but it was still fun. I caught a yellowtail snapper with a yo-yo, which is basically a ring of plastic and some fishing line. And Chad caught a fish that Brandon had never even seen before, a sand diver. Looks like a swimming lizard. That's the sea base blessing that we said before our meal at sea base. Bless the creatures of the sea, bless this person I call me, bless the keys you make so grand, bless the sun that warms the land, bless the fellowship we feel as we gather for this meal. Amen. That's it. Well, thank you. That looks like an interesting trip. I thought it was so um, wonderful the way that it was described to me, how they all got on the ship and then, you know, the captain showed them everything. And then little by little, he gave them tasks to do, telling them what to do. And by the third or fourth day, they were doing the task, you know, by themselves. So they were basically sailing the ship. And what a wonderful experience to, to have. And, you know, that's kind of how we grow in our faith also. You know, we start out with somebody guiding us and showing us the way. And then we go out on our own and we're able to continue to grow and learn more and develop our faith. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at our next um, hope through engagement, which is the hope through engagement when witnessing. And our scripture is Acts 20, 24 through 28. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news and God's grace, of God's grace. Now, I know that none of you among who I have gone about preaching the, good, the, about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of any of you, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Keep watch over yourself and all of the flocks of which the Holy Spirit has made 
you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, he which he brought his with his own blood. Our second scripture is from Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind the brokenheartedness, to proclaim freedom from the captives, and to release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God, to confront to all who mourn, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who give grief in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, and oils of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They are called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Engagement when witnessing. Witnessing is almost a naughty word. It's a scary thought. It's a misinterpreted act. You just heard Dylan and myself and Hazel witness to tell our experiences with God. Actions of devotion, service, and joy. Jesus told the disciples, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power and you will witness for me. The disciples knew that they needed someone to join them as they as they witness as witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus, to their stories of the mighty acts he performed. Throughout scripture, we are called to preach the good news, be the shepherds of the church. Let us tell our stories of how God heals our sick children, gives us guidance through our lives, blesses us with joy, comforts us during loss, and gives us peace when the fear of dying from COVID overwhelms us. We can provide comfort and pray for or with others in sorrow, share the hope of eternal life with those afraid of dying, model the life others wish to have, and then give all the glory and praise to God. Be ready at all times, as we are told to answer anyone who asks to explain how the hope we have. Share your joy in the Lord. You know who you belong to. You know why you belong to God. And you know where you are going. Therefore, go with hope through witnessing. Share the good news. Your good news. The good news of Jesus working in our lives. Plant the seed and God will do the rest. Amen.
Those are trying times. <laughs> okay, any others you'd like to discuss today? All right, then. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you provide healing for those that are sick. Be with Tim, Maxine, Kurt, Madeline, Derek, Vicki, Leland, Mary, Jenny, Lou, Kenny, Vera, Bentley. We thank you that Patsy is doing well. We thank you that Alan is healing and we pray for strength for Bobby to help him as he gets on his way again. Lord, we look for comfort for those who are suffering losses. The Miller family, Sal, Martin, Burton, Wainer, Naus, Temple, Walter, and Marzen, with the loss of their father Gordon. What a beautiful scene to think of watching your loved one and being where you love to be, Lord, and now he's with you in heaven. Please be with all of those families. We ask for guidance for those in need as well, Lord. We thank you for all that you give to us and all that you have planned for us. We ask all of this in your precious and glorious name. Amen.
when I say, Lord, here I am. Now, Abraham was the first to go and must have been a brave man because you did not say where he was going. And still, he followed your command. He shows us that when you ask us to move, we should say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. There are many who are bold, and in your name take a stand. When your people are hurting each other in ways we can't comprehend. Without hesitation, you say, they say to you, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. There are many who are bold, and in your name take a stand. Oh, okay, let me move to the next one. <laughs> when we hear tales of injustice and opposition happens across our vast land, we believe you want us to respond, to be your feet and your hands. And while I don't know the work you need to, me to do, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. You are working through our lives to fulfill your mighty will and plan. And it requires a submission we sometimes can't understand. But as you promise to never forsake us, we each say, Lord, here I am. church. Um, there's a collection of plates at the back. Um, some people send their donation, their um, offerings through the mail and others go through our online offering service. So at this time I will say a prayer, an offertory prayer. Please bow. God of power and glory, we come to your altar this morning offering our gifts and praying for your presence in a world that is hurting and dividing. Much of what we see is chaos, confusion, and anxiety. A world that desperately needs a glimpse to glimpse your presence and your glory. More than our gifts of money, we pray our lives would be a window into your love and compassion. We pray your light might shine through us to the world. Amen. So all of our service today has been about engagement and there are many things that we do within the service that is engagement that haven't been called attention to. But everything is for the glory of God and so that you are sharing the love that you have with the Lord. We have another hymn that we will do, and um, Abel will help us out again. Please rise if you can.
person that stands up here every Sunday to the ones that clean the carpet and make sure all the Sunday school rooms are prepared for the next week's Sunday school. There are so many things that each and every person does, uh, including your prayers that are just priceless, right? Uh, to hold us all together, especially during this time of our having to be physically distant, we can be socially close. So receive now the blessing of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing song is a prayer that we have, that is much beloved in this congregation.